Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lapp with Maths and Stats uh, and this short video, uh, one of our first uh, in their set of videos dealing with calculus and in particular differentiation from first principles, is going to concentrate on a very simple function, it's what's known as a, a power function of the form uh, f of x uh, is equal to a times x to the n. And so really what we want to try to derive in this particular video from first principles uh, is the derivative of a function that looks something like this. It's a constant term times an unknown x raised to a particular power, raised to the power of n. And let's just recall, so we're just going to recall, uh, recall that the derivative of a function uh, from first principles, dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the limit uh, as h tends to zero of the function f of x plus h minus f of x uh, all over all over h. So by definition, um, this this particular this particular uh, derivative here represents the gradient uh, at any particular point uh, as h tends to zero. Uh, this small infinitesimal change uh, with respect to the x-axis. Uh, gets smaller and smaller and smaller and actually tends to zero. So we, in a previous video, we've actually defined and we've, we've derived where this particular formula comes from. But what we want to do is we want to, we want to apply this particular formula to this particular function, uh, which is what's known as differentiation from first principles. Uh, and we're going to need something very special in here. Uh, we're going to also need, we will we'll need, okay? So we'll need, we'll need for this particular derivation uh, the fact that x plus y to the power of n, uh, when you have <clears throat> when you have the summation of two unknowns to the power of n, that we can actually expand that out uh, using the binomial using the binomial distribution uh, or the binomial expansion, and that's equal to uh, n c zero times x to the power of n times y to the zero plus uh, n c one times x to the power of n minus one times y to the one plus all the way through plus uh, nc let's say n minus one times x to the power times x to the power of one times y to the power of n minus one plus nc n times x to the power of zero times y to the power of n that when we have when we have an expression of this particular form uh, x plus y raised to a particular power, that we can use the binomial expansion to actually expand that out to a sum of power terms. Okay, and we will we'll need that in this particular derivation. So let's let's apply the definition the definition of a of a, a derivative uh, to this particular function. So let's just say let let f of x equal a to the power a times x to the power of n. Okay, well then. We have dy dx, the derivative of this function. This is y is equal to a to the xn. The derivative of y with respect to x with respect to x is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of the function evaluated at x plus h, okay, plus x plus some small, small change in x. So we know that f of x plus f of x is equal to a times x to the n. So f of x plus h must be equal to a times x plus h to the n. So this becomes a times x plus h to the n. That gives us this piece here. This is the function f evaluated uh, at the point x plus h minus f of x. Well, f of x is simply a times x to the n, which all needs to be divided by, which all needs to be divided by h. And that's what you can probably see now. The reason why we need this binomial expansion is what we're going to do is we're going to expand out this particular term. So this becomes the limit as h tends to zero of a times the binomial expansion of this particular term here, x plus h to the n. So anywhere, anywhere we see a y in this expansion, we're actually going to put in a h. So it becomes x plus h to the n is going to be n c zero. So it's going to be n c zero times x to the n times, now the y is a h, the y here is a h, so it's going to be times h to the power of zero plus nc one times x to the power of n minus one times h to the power of one plus 
let's say nc2 times x to the power of n minus 2 times h squared. And what's going to happen here is, is that we're decrementing down the exponent here of this particular function, this n, we're decrementing it down. And if we keep taking one away from it each time, it's eventually going to get down to x to the power of one and then x to the power of zero. But what's also happening is that, is that this particular, let's say, factor in this term here, 